And so we've got this really interesting program coming out from uh, the mathematics department. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. So we, we're starting a new degree program this fall called Applied and Computational Mathematics. Uh, it starts, it takes students who are in their junior year, uh, and it is a two-year program. Uh, to get into the program, they need to get a minor in mathematics, take uh, uh, the first semester of a sequence called uh, mathematical analysis, and then they need to take uh, the introductory computer science class so they can learn how to uh, program in the C programming language. And uh, then if they can take all of those courses before uh, the end of their sophomore year, then they can get into this program. And it's a very intense program. Uh, the students, it's, it's eight credits per semester, and then on top of that, students will take a minor in some other subject that is related to uh, mathematics uh, in engineering or economics or in finance or uh, geosciences or biology. So, so I guess the, <clears throat> the, the characteristic about this uh, course is that it's not just mathematics. You're, you're using mathematics in some way with information technology. Or yeah, so uh, the, the, the first two courses that they take in the junior year, they take two courses in the junior year, two courses in the senior year. The, the, the courses that they're taking right now, uh, one is called Computation and Optimization, and it, it teaches students how to design algorithms and to program them on computer and uh, to solve problems uh, with computer. And then the other class is called uh, Mathematical Analysis, which uh, is uh, an advanced uh, course uh, that teaches them how to prove theorems and how to analyze algorithms. So it's the combination of analysis of algorithms and design of al algorithms. And, and that combination is going to allow them then in their senior year, uh, the two courses in their senior year that they take um, are about modeling. One is to model with data and uncertainty, and the other is to model with what we call dynamics and control. And by having this algorithmic background in their junior year, then when they get into their senior year, they're going to be able to solve some real-world problems. So I've got two questions that come to mind. Okay. Um, the first one is, is this program unique to BYU? or is it Yeah, so uh, this is something that has been growing for about seven years at BYU uh, through uh, what we call the IMPACT program. This was a research group where we would train up the students in the summer and then farm them out into different interdisciplinary uh, research groups, and then they would come in on a weekly basis and we'd talk about problems as an entire group. And it has been a very successful group with, with really fantastic placements in both uh, top PhD programs throughout the country and in top uh, uh, companies that have hired the students. Uh, so now we have graduates all over the place uh, in, in hedge funds and, and uh, large organizations. Um, and, and then we also have them in uh, uh, top PhD programs like University of Chicago and MIT and Stanford. Wow. And, and so we've been doing that for several years. And then this new degree program uh, is a, um, the, the next step in, in the sort of evolution of this idea of, of bringing together interdisciplinary applied mathematics research with uh, a very rigorous coursework. So yes, it is a very unique program. It's unique to BYU. And it's something that we could only design uh, having spent that seven years in the IMPACT program, getting an understanding of what other disciplines are using mathematics to solve and, and kind of consolidating all of those ideas and these many different disciplines into this common core of mathematics, statistics, and computation. And that brings me to my second question, which okay. the average listener may not understand necessarily what it means to create and use an algorithm in, you know, using computers in that that way. So what can, what can they do with, with this type of mathematics? That's a good question. So uh, basically, it, we live in a world today where we can collect data much faster than we can analyze it. Uh, to give you an example, Walmart collects uh, 2,500 terabytes a day of data from their customers. Uh, some of that is scan data from, from the, the, the <laughs> register. Some of that is uh, video data of security cameras. Uh, but, but think of 2,500 terabytes a day of data, or I'm sorry, that's an hour of data. Uh, that they're that they're bringing in, they have no in, idea. An hour, twenty yeah. five hundred an hour. Walmart Walmart collects twenty five hundred terabytes of data an hour. That's a massive amount that of is information. A massive amount of information, and they have no idea what to do with all of that, uh, you know. And and so all they can really do is, is manage and track their inventory, you know. So when somebody buys a bicycle, they can make sure they get another one on the truck the next morning to replenish their inventory, and and they can do some very rough analysis on there. 
um, pricing and, and forecasting, but but not in a targeted way. It's very difficult with that amount of data to pinpoint, you know, what customers are going to want what products and how to forecast demand and make sure that you're getting the right products in the right place at the right price at the right time for the customers to buy. Wow. And that's just one example. That's just one example. Uh, we've got uh, examples in healthcare where the vast amounts of of uh, claims information coming into uh, insurance companies, uh, vast amounts of electronic uh, medical records coming into hospitals, and trying to be able to make forecasts and predictions on you know how many MRI machines are we going to need in ten years? What kind of new hospital wings do we need to be building to to meet the demands of of an aging baby boomer population? Uh, how do we uh, tailor and design uh, insurance policies in a way that's profitable and and also, you know, giving people what they want, um, you know, in in other industries such as uh, manufacturing, uh, vast amounts of information on, um, you know, the the accuracy and sensitivity of of different uh, instruments and how they're making. Uh, you know, whether it's computer chips or automobiles, uh, you've got robots that are welding things together and, and recording a lot of data in that process. And, and so we, we collect data very well. We can store the data, although it's getting increasingly expensive to do so. But we don't really have good techniques for dealing with vast amounts of data. And so this, uh, these algorithms that they create, they, they sort and they categorize and they, they calculate these different uh, problems that, that need solving. Yes, absolutely. And, and one of the techniques that we, we teach in the class is, is what's called dimensionality reduction. So uh, what that is, is, is you know, in, in healthcare is a great example. You've got nearly 20,000 different diagnosis codes that get coded into an insurance claim. Um, you know, and you've got about that many different kinds of procedures that get coded into an insurance claim. And, and so, you know, I mean, and they're so specific. It's like, you know, gunshot to this region would be one kind of diagnosis. That's interesting. Which is very different than, you know, the left arm and the right arm would right. be different diagnoses. So you've got this encoding system that's very detailed, uh, much like a library encodes books uh, for all the different kinds of procedures. And so how do you make sense of something when you've got 20,000 dimensions? And so one of the goals is to is to find a way to bring that down to you know a few hundred that are more manageable kinds of 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 uh, um, diagnosis groups or or procedure groups uh, in, with the Walmart example you know they've got a hundred thousand different barcodes SKUs is what they're called um, that you know that's the number you know they've got They've got grape yogurt and they've got, you know, peach yogurt. And, and so when you're looking at all the different yogurts, you can have thousands of different barcodes just for, you know, yogurt and related dairy products. How do you make sense of that uh, when you're looking at the data and you've got so many different variations of products? And so to consolidate things down into uh, smaller groups and to do that algorithmically, to do that based on the data itself, not what some guy thinks is the right categorization, but let the data decide what that categorization is, uh, is, is one of the techniques that we teach. It seems like that this is a really complicated process and that they need to really get good at it. You need hands-on you know, real life experience with this. Is there any opportunities that this program offers to students at BYU to, to get that? Yes, absolutely. So there, there's two different uh, pathways that we have for that. One is that every class has two hours of computer lab tied to it. So that not only are the students spending three hours in the classroom for each course, uh, but they're also spending two hours uh, writing computer programs to solve problems. And we've got these problems kind of broken down into hour-long chunks. And so in one kind of lab, they might write a computer algorithm to solve a kind of problem, and then in the next lab, they'll use that algorithm to actually solve a real-world problem. Uh, an example of the kinds of problems that they're going to solve is they the students will code up their own voice recognition software as one of the labs. That's interesting. Yeah, and they'll do a facial recognition. They've got uh, a bunch of very sophisticated image analysis and graphics uh, labs that they do. Um, I, I mean, there's we've, we've got about 200 labs in total that we've designed uh, with studying epidemiology, uh, studying uh, weight loss, and the, the, the chemistry for how the human body metabolizes 
um, fats and, and carbohydrate and proteins, and then, and then how do you use that information to design uh, a, a weight loss strategy, and then, and then what will a person actually weigh if they do that is, is the kind of problem. So we also have portfolio problems from, in finance, that, so a student can take that skill and go into Wall Street and work for a company like Goldman Sachs or a hedge fund and, and be able to hit the ground running. So that's one aspect is the computer labs. The other aspect that we have is that we've got an internship program. So uh, we, we have an internship coordinator in our department who uh, helps these students uh, get placed into different internships and, and we're, we're targeting top companies. Um, we're talking to Google and Raytheon and Goldman Sachs and companies like that, uh, Adobe here locally, um, to, to get uh, our students into into these companies as interns, and then when they'll come back and finish the degree, they'll have that real real world experience and be able to uh, really hit the ground running when they start their careers. This seems like it's very uh, very specific on what you teach them here, but it's so broad the application of of what they can do once they leave BYU. And this is there's no other program that's similar to this. In the United States, or no, no there's not. And in fact, um, one of the, the the challenges that we've uh, that we face is that we ha- we've had to design uh, these course materials, and and like I say, we've been spending about seven years doing that. Um, and, and we're actually writing the textbooks to go with it. So right now we're we're kind of developing real time, giving students lecture notes and, and handouts and the computer labs. And then over the next four years, we're going to write four textbooks. Uh, me and, and my collaborator Tyler Jarvis are writing these four textbooks, um, which then we can export to other universities and try and get the program working there. But this is something that has grown here at BYU, and and again it came to us is in, in this process of, of spending seven years doing very interdisciplinary research uh, through the IMPACT program. And, uh, and the National Science Foundation has funded us. They've been very generous with support. They funded the IMPACT program uh, in 2006 and, and have given us uh, well over a million dollars over the last um, seven years. And in fact, uh, this month we got another grant for $600,000 to help uh, design this program and put it together. And, and there's a very important reason as to why uh, they're uh, focusing on that is that we just have a national shortage uh, of students in uh, st- graduating in STEM fields. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. And the, the federal government has estimated that we need a 34% increase in the number of STEM majors in order to meet the demands of, of our economy, of our um, you know, growth in the technology sector, but also our national security. 